This is Friday, July the 11th, 2014. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Walter Kilroy. Welcome, Walter. May I ask when you were born? In Dorchester, Massachusetts. And when were you born? 1925. Okay. And what town do you currently live in? Braintree, Massachusetts. Your marital status? My wife passed away eight years ago. Do you have children? Three. Do you have grandchildren? Four. Tell us what Dorchester was like growing up. Uh, excellent, fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone was in the poor boat. We never had any money, no cars. We lived, we lived close to the town field, which was a park in Dorchester. And my mother used to let us out the door at 8 o'clock and we'd go up there and play on the swings and everything else and come back for dinner and out again until 5 o'clock. What did your father do for a living? He worked for Boston Gas Company. Do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was attacked on December 7th? Yeah. I was in the Dorchester Theater mm -hmm. in Dorchester. Were you seeing a movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. And a, a gentleman got on, walked onto the stage and all the movies stopped and the lights went on and he says, is there any servicemen? Report back to your stations. Any sailors, you go to the building over in South Boston. Uh -huh. Did you, were you aware of where Pearl Harbor was? I didn't know where it was, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Right. And when Pearl Harbor was attacked in 1941, were you in high school? Yes. At uh, what high school? Dorchester High School. Okay. Tell us what high school was like when you were there, especially during the war years. Well, it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. It was all right. It was a long walk. Did you graduate from Dorchester High? No, I left in the final year and went into the Army. And when did you enter the military? When did you enter the military? What year? Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> I'd, I'd say January of 44. Mm -hmm. And were you drafted? Yes. And you joined the Army? Right. Or the Army joined you? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Why did you choose that branch of the service? Well, my grandfather was in the Army. He was years ago. He was over Castle Island and Dorchester, where they had. Mm -hmm. Did family or friends join the service when you did? They were all gone. Uh -huh. into the service, most yeah. of them. Where were you sent for basic training? At uh, Fort Crowder. Mm -hmm. That's in Missouri. Missouri. Joplin, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. Tell us what that was like, basic training. To tell you the truth, I liked it. Uh -huh. the, the older fellows with me seemed to miss their wives and children. They were most, you know, but I didn't, I didn't mind it. I had no reason. Uh, did you, um, you, did you like the physical training? Yes. Okay. According to this, you said you didn't, you didn't mind it except for the 20 mile hikes. Yeah. <laughs> did you receive advanced training beyond basic? No. Okay. What kind of, tra um, was there any other kind of training you received? Well, I went after the doctor found out I had a hernia. Ooh. 
So they put me in limited service. Uh -huh. So then when I, after a while, two or three weeks, I went into the hospital there and the doctor operated on me. And I come out and I was in full time service. And I went back to my unit. Uh-huh. And uh, about a month later, we went overseas. Okay. What were your duties? I was a, a pole lineman uh -huh. and a switchboard operator. Okay. And tell us about your trip overseas. Was this the first time you ever left America? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell us what uh, the trip overseas was like. It was terrible. Uh huh. We started off, we left Boston. Mm hmm. And we, went, we had to go to Virginia to join a convoy mm -hmm. and get on the Gulf Stream. And when we were out there for three days, we woke up one morning, we looked around and didn't see any other boats except a couple of destroyers. We lost a screw on the boat, one of the propellers. Oh no. And we couldn't keep up with the... Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't keep up with the convoy. Uh-huh. What happened then? Well, we just putted along and we headed for the nearest port, it was La Havre, France. And they had two destroyer escorts, on, one on each side of us. Mm -hmm. And they went with us all the way into the, and we docked there. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to France. France I liked. Mm -hmm. So what uh, unit were you with? The 3189th Signal Service. Mm -hmm. And what did you do when you were in France? Well, we, we ran uh, electric lines for, for telephones, most of mm -hmm. telephones. We had a big two and a half ton truck and a big spool. Uh -huh. And the wire was on that spool and you put it on these things that extended out and how you held it as the truck moved, it laid it into the ground. And where in France were you doing all this? Well, the first, I was in La Havre, and then we get on mm -hmm. a, a trailer truck to Charlieville, France. Uh -huh. That's up near Belgium. Okay. And, and we were billeted in them. They took the houses away from people, and they billeted us there for a while. Were you ever in contact with the civilians in France and Belgium? Well, you're being billeted in houses. Were you, uh, did you ever say bonjour? Oh, oh yeah, we uh -huh. don't take a line. They give you a little book. Uh-huh. You, know, you know, which way did they go and stuff like that. I see. <laughs> okay. Did you, were you in ever um, in direct combat with the enemy? No. Not How about I can, indirect? I can hear them. Okay. And this was a course against the Germans. Yeah. And your your was your unit part of the general Allied advancement? Yes. Into Germany. And what rank were you at the time? Private. Okay. And while you were heading into Germany, uh. Were, were your was your clothing adequate? Was your equipment adequate for what you needed? At the time we went, it wasn't too bad. We had jackets and stuff. Uh -huh. and How about the food? The food? The food was the army food, K rations, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You get used to that. Yeah. Can you tell me a little more about K rations? About the K rations? Oh. Well, it's funny that cave rations come in a wax little box mm -hmm. protected from the elements. And you open it up and you took a little can. It was cheese and bacon. Uh-huh. And you open it up, they give you a key. And that wasn't bad. Okay. You know, you ate that. Mm -hmm. A few crackers and a couple of cigarettes. But then they had a little chocolate bar like that, a square bar. Mm-hmm. And I opened it up and it said Walter Baker. And that's part of Josh, just the way they came. <laughs> Baker's chocolate. A little bit of home. Yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned cigarettes. And 
I heard before the interview you did not you didn't smoke. I don't smoke. I still don't. So good for you, by the way. What did you do with the cigarettes? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, we used to give them to guys that wanted them, and we'd give, we'd give them to the people too, uh -huh. or whatever, you know. And, the... and while you were doing uh, the, the line work, what was the terrain like? The terrain, the land? Oh, it was it was on a dirt road and kind of hilly, and it, you you weren't used to it, you know. And the truck was, it was it, thank God it wasn't raining or snowing, and you'd be in trouble with it. Right. We, we, we did pretty good. We did about twenty miles a day. Wow. And do you feel that your superiors gave you good leadership? Were your uh, superior officers good? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They, they were friendly enough. Okay. How did you hear about the other uh, theaters of war? Did you have a radio? We had a radio, but it was for the use of the the officers and the men to uh -huh. contact the other trucks and stuff. Right. We we didn't have anything know anything about how that was doing in Japan or nothing. We, mm -hmm. Did, did you ever receive Stars and Stripes or any other publication? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, we got the Stars and Stripes. Mm -hmm. It was very good. Yeah. Um, did you, were you ever given a rest and recreation? Time to get, kind of get off duty no, here? No, we, were there, we weren't there long enough. Uh -huh. The people who were getting that were up there for a year or six months. Mm -hmm. They let them go to Paris for two days or something. Uh-huh. In your um, in your notes, you mentioned Tony Bennett. Yeah, well, Tony Bennett, we heard later on, we, we used to watch him entertaining, and his name was Tony Benedetto. Uh huh. So we never put two and two together. He wasn't even heard of by then anyway. Right. And the uh, next thing I know, I see him there, and he looks familiar, <laughs> and, it was, and it was Tony Bennett. And I think he was on the third wave. He's seen a lot of combat. Really? But I never heard it published about his life. He never. Oh, interesting. Uh, but you did get to Paris at one point. Oh, I went to Paris later on, yeah. And uh, what'd you think of it? Well, I wasn't looking at statues and stuff. I didn't, I was only 18. Mm -hmm. I was awed by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the people were very friendly. And, yeah. uh, And how long were you in Europe overall? Oh, January, February, March, April, May, June, about six months. Six months. Yeah. So that takes you into 1945? Right. Where, uh, where were you when VE Day was declared? Victory over Europe. When the war ended? Or, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, we were in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, I think, uh -huh. at the time. I think that's when it. Do you, uh, do you recall anything that happened that day, celebration? No, we say people went crazy and everything else, but uh, mm -hmm. I think most of us knew it was coming. Okay. You know, they were, they were going so fast. So. Were, uh, were you still stationed in Europe? After the war, after the war, they brought us back to France, uh -huh. and we were at these camps. They named after cigarettes: mm -hmm. Lucky Strike, Camel, Chesterfield, Old Gold, mm -hmm. and they wait there to be reinstated where you were going. A lot of times, they kept us longer because they didn't know the situation in Japan. Ah. Uh, they were mm -hmm. still at war with Japan. And they didn't know whether we were going to be headed that way or which way. While you were stationed <laughs> at one of these camps, uh, did you were you on regular duties or you just well, kind of? We just sitting there, camp sleeping and eating uh, the uh -huh. <laughs> three times a day. Tell us a little bit about this. Oh, that uh, this I took off a dead German. Ooh. I had other ones, different things that we had. I lost them or gave them away or whatever. Okay. Can you show that for the camera, please? I think it's a, a rifleman's 
bad so I'm not sure. Uh-huh. All right, and let's and tell us a little bit about that photo. If you could be showing the photo for the camera, please. <laughs> and what what's that one? That's after we hear that the war was over. Uh-huh. And this was uh, at one of the camps? In Chesterfield. In Chesterfield. And which one are you? Right there, I'd say. Okay, you're right there. Yeah. Be so kind. Right there. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. Ah. Tell us a little bit about this photo. That's two of my friends. Okay, and do you remember what his name was? All we knew was their first names. And what's his first name? I think that's Tony, and the other guy is Angelo. Uh -huh. I think there's a couple of Italians. But... And where, do you remember where that was taken? That was taken, and uh, I, I got a bunch in there from the Frankfurt train station. Mm -hmm. That could be taken there. Okay. And let me click show for the camera. Oh. Now, were these, uh, these two gentlemen, were they Italian army, or were they just um, Italians in... Italian Americans, in other words. Oh, these were Americans. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were Americans. All right. So now we're back at Camp Chesterfield. Do you remember hearing about the atomic bomb? No. 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 They stopped rolling the boats for some reason. Mm -hmm. got, some guys were there for a month, just waiting. Yeah. We, we had to wait till you had enough points. Right. When did you leave Europe? Where? When? I'd say in June. June of 45? Yeah. Okay. June of 45. Okay, Walter. You're heading out of Europe, and you're going back. I take it you're going back to the United States. Right. Um, how did you get back? It's a, it's a funny thing. We were on. We heard back when Ernie Pyle was killed. Mm -hmm. He was a, a writer. We were on the Ernie Pyle was the name of the ship. They, wow. They built a ship there for them. Mm-hmm. And where did you land? New York. New York. Now I can't think of the the camp, but it was one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. Everyone landed there. Okay. And did you go back to Massachusetts from there? We went back to Fort Devens. Uh huh. Were you discharged there? I discharged in Devens. Okay. And from there, did you go back to Dorchester? Oh, after we were sorted out and everything else. Mm -hmm. But the, when we got off the boat at the fort in New York, they told us we we're gonna go to the officer's mess for dinner, and it was a special dinner. So they gave us steak, potatoes, everything on a tray. But the gravy was all over everything. And <laughs> but we ate it anyway, it was very good. That was, they, they give everyone a nap when they come back. Mm -hmm. They give everyone a nice meal. Oh, good for them. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> After all, all that on K yeah. rations. Yeah. <laughs> so you're now back in Dorchester. What happened afterward? The war ended. The war ended. Yeah. And what was your rank when the war ended? PFC. Okay, Walter, tell us what happened uh, when you became a civilian again. Oh, well, I was only young at the time. I didn't have a job to go to, mm -hmm. but uh, I met my buddies there, and, and three of us, we, we heard they were hiring carpenters mm -hmm. up in Newton to shingle houses. 
So we all bought the tools, mm -hmm. put them on, and went and, and, and they hired us under a subcontract. Yeah. You got so much so much money for doing the siding of a house, and if it had a garage, you got more. I see. So we teamed up two and two. No, you can stop whatever time you wanted and finish whatever time you wanted. Mm -hmm. So we started, and we made a lot of money. Made a few bucks. Nice. You know, but the, the hardest thing was building the staging uh -huh. to stand on. We didn't know much about that. <laughs> but we got by. Yeah, and, a little on the job trading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> were, uh, did you join any veteran service organizations? Did you join a veterans group like VFW or no, Legion? We, I joined the Stephen Cochran Post. Mm -hmm. In, in, in Dorchester, and I was the third guy to join. But in them days, the guys coming back wanted to join a post that was already built. Mm -hmm. And people were moving out of Dorchester and heading for, you know, other homes for building. Right. So we couldn't, we, we, had a, we had a storefront, and no one's gonna join a post to have a, <laughs> so eventually the, Posts had were done away, and they all went to these other posts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was that Legion BFW? I I, own, I joined the DFW, BFW. One, but, but I never uh, mm -hmm. I never go to the meetings or anything. All right. Did you uh, take advantage of the GI Bill at any point? No. No. I don't think so. I don't remember. So you were a carpenter. That's what I told them. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you stay. But we bluffed our way by. And it isn't uh -huh. that hard if you're just shingling. Right. You know, but if you were doing furniture or something, that's a different uh, mm -hmm. cabinets. But we got our way by and we made quite a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, Walter, uh, is there any um, stories that you can recall from your experience in the military? Are there any stories that you can recall? Oh, let me see. I must have a few. Mm -hmm. It was a story. It was a true story. These guys were laying cable, mm -hmm. and they took the wrong street, the wrong dirt road, uh -huh. and they're driving. The boat. 10 miles an hour, and the, the guy happened to look out the front, and he got over the hill, and he seen a bunch of tanks. And they were German tanks. Oh, brother. So he, back, he backed up and got the heck out of there, and come back and told him, uh -huh. and he got a medal for it. <laughs> we're going the wrong way. <laughs> okay, Walter, is there anything, uh, let me put it this way. Um, How, um, how did serving the military affect you? Not really, because I was only young, you know. Mm -hmm. I was only young, I didn't. Did any of your children go into the military? No. Or your, nor, nor your grandchildren? No. Uh -huh. And Walter, what are you doing these days? I'm retired, I'm in the uh, Braintree Rehab. Mm -hmm. In Marindry. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we end, end this interview? Uh, well, I, I have a letter here from mm -hmm. a person I was with when I was over there. We, this gentleman they're talking about, if this is the one, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Is there another one? Oops. Oh, oh. Oh, Save. Hey, there you go. Maybe that's it. I don't yeah. know. Well, before we. Yeah. Now, during the war, I knew this fellow. Mm -hmm. And he joined, he came come into our outfit. He, he won the Silver Star, and he uh -huh. never told us how he got it or what. 
But they, they took them off the line and put them with us. Okay. And we were friendly the whole time for, for I don't know, for mm -hmm. uh, That's one letter I got from him. Uh -huh. from, if it's okay if I read it out? What? Would it be all right if I read it? Ugh. You okay? <laughs> the letter reads, hi Walter, I have been thinking of you for three weeks with the Red Sox and Yankees. I even ran out of snacks watching. I hope they go all the way. God bless John. And what's John's last name? Casina. Casina. And he's the one who won the Silver Star. Yeah. And now I was, I was friendly with him up until seven years ago. We used to, in fact, he came down to Boston with his wife. Uh -huh. And we went to Yonkers with my wife, and we had a nice time. And I didn't know, I called, tried to call him at, at the time he died, and he oh. didn't answer. But he was living with his sister, and it's just a letter she gave me. Mm -hmm. okay. Dear Walter, although we never met, I do feel as though I know you. My father always spoke about you in such a fond manner. You two were like lifelong buddies. I know how much he valued the bond you shared. I also realize that baseball will never be the same for me. I wish you well. Thank you for the last 64 years of friendship. And it is signed Joanne Goldstein, yeah. the daughter of John yeah. Cosina. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. So before we wrap things up, uh, let's go into the box and Let's. just kind of show some of the badges that you have here. Yeah. For example, now what is that photo? That photo was taken in, Chan in France mm -hmm. in front of the Roma restaurant. Now that's John Casino there. That's the guy who won the Silver Star. Yeah. Okay, we'll just point that up with the camera. That's John. Yeah. And are you in here as well? Yeah, they were, this guy was a cook, and this is John Yeager. He's from Minnesota. Uh-huh. And that's John, that's John, that's me. Wow. So I saved them all. Mm-hmm. And tell us a little bit about this badge. That patch, I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's, it's a unit. It's a divisional patch, but I don't. I forget what division it is. Okay. And that, that's a divisional patch. Mm -hmm. That's the Screaming Eagles, the 101st Air Force. Uh huh. I wasn't in that. Right. How did you come across it? My friends gave them to me. Ah, okay. Walter, is there anything else before we wrap things up? It was a good experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoyed it. I was only 18. And it was good to get back home. Mm -hmm. Well, Walter Kilroy, we thank you so much for coming up and I'm sorry taking part. I had that. That's okay. It does happen. Yeah. Uh, and taking part in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're a good group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.